keep talking about physicians and uh, their role in this. And when you start looking at a scalable system, and you've got a lot of uh, physicians out there who, by the way, work for free once you're inside the VA, uh, you can tap all this incredible expertise and pull it in. So how do you build the toolkit to build this community of physicians and users and scheduling clerks to build a better system? And how do you establish dynamic of start something that's simple and then make it get better? So uh, to that end, uh, Dr. Ross Fletcher here, the CEO of, or uh, Chief of Staff at Washington VA, has a few words to say, and he's probably our, our leading doc uh, for over these many, many years. I want to be make it very clear that what all of you developed and what Ted O'Neill helped start is continuing. This has not stopped. A couple of people said, well, when was the last time such and such changed? And when did that change? And so forth. And I'm one of the few people that was there at the very beginning and that is still a VA employee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so when they look to who to blame, they will look in my direction. But needless to say, most of the time they look at who to praise because what all of you that were involved in has been highly successful and very difficult to improve on. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to say initially something about the current problems and how IT fits in that setting because what we see in the newspapers is frequently numbers that make the VA look like it may not be doing its job. Access is not good. Why is access not good? Well, there's 60,000 patients that didn't get quite seen on time. Out of how many? Six million. That's 1%. 96% of the patients were seen in 14 days. No one ever heard of setting a 14-day limit on when you could see patients, when you could start them. So just the fact that we are trying to get it 14 days and we're measuring it is unique. No one else can even report this kind of information and decide whether it's good or bad. I did uh, make a graph and the lower end of the graph of the blue part are the patients that are seen on a scheduled visit. When you read the papers, all the rest of these people, four times as many that are scheduled are being seen or contacted by people every single day. Every single day we see in primary care 250 people, but we see 80 people on complete walk-ins. We see 206 people on telephone calls that we actually register and record in CPRS. We see 130 people in secure messaging. They're contacting and connecting with us and we're connecting back. We're seeing 70 people in the emergency room. We're seeing 70 people in home telehealth and home-based primary care. That whole list, this, all of these things, are patients that are being seen. We care for the person who sees us as a patient. And we do the best we can immediately when we see that patient to take note of what his problems are and if he has complaints, they're seen that day. They're not seen three months later, two months later, it's not dependent on how long it will take to see that patient. If the patient needs to be seen, if he's having heart pain or things of that sort, they're seen immediately and taken to the operating room immediately. If they have cancer, they're seen immediately and taken care of. There are places where we don't quite get the numbers as good as we would like. We'd like surgical procedures in some instances to be done quicker. But the ones that need to be seen done that day are done that day, that night, that three in the morning and four in the morning. That's how our hospitals work. And a lot of people don't understand that that's what we do every single day. And we have some uh, MRIs that we're a little slow on, but we just put in a new machine and pretty soon those will be totally up to date and all within a very short period of time of their request. Mental health is good uh, and so forth. The scheduling package, George Timpson, is never been beat. We have gone out uh, on, on, on contract and asked for things and it doesn't seem that we've ever gotten anything that could actually beat it. And what's being done more recently is to try to overlay on top of the old scheduling package some newer ways of handling it. And it would be 
dynamite if that happens because as often as not our schedulers make errors that lengthen the wait time not shorten the wait time that will put today down as the date the desired date and it's the same day the guy was just seen and all the time that you wait for the two months is then put into these numbers that get uh, pulled up and, and run, run out and that just shouldn't be allowed to happen and you can do that with, with software you can make software work that way. If you put an overlay on this thing that will not allow those errors to be made, we will have data that will look good and that we can stand on and that will show us to have access as a model, not as something that can be criticized, but as a model for medicine in the VA. And once again, we will do this a lot through the IT things. Uh, we are moving out with Neil Evans' uh, new iPads. Uh, there are 300 per site, 18 sites that are now being deployed. Neil has been taking a lot from my place and over to central office to do this. But this is what's been happening with doctors and people around our hospital all the time. They are being used to develop things and make it even better. Uh, a guy named uh, uh, Dane Bent is down in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Carolina today. I, had a meeting of my informatics group and suddenly it didn't seem like there were many people in the room so I was making phone calls and he's putting in some of these uh, iPads. There are currently provider facing iPads that can see into the patient's records and put really nice graphs and do a lot of the actual note taking and putting in uh, 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 orders as well but they're also patient facing so that the patient can go into what, what we called all in the past, and we actually had Obama mention in one of the State of the Union message, the blue button. Well, there's a mobile blue button, MBB. And the mobile blue button is just a, you punch, and you can see all of your records, put it into a PDF file, and send it to a doctor. Now, that is very advanced and very good, and, very, and this is what we're still doing. How, where are we getting the information? Off the record, all of you have helped build. We're just putting it out differently, faster and quicker, and using it so the patients can see all of their record in their home, on their laptops if they want to, or on their iPads if they want to. Well, we're about to put a, a jabber in place that will give secure uh, visual images, like Skype, but very secure. And that will be available so that uh, a, a mental health doctor in my place, instead of having the patient come to a CBOC and sit in a group where he's taking care of them, can actually have the patient not have to move out of his home. More and more and more, we will be measuring blood pressures and oxygen saturations and the ability to be at rest in that patient's home. And we'll take it to the patient's home. We'll take the health care there rather than having the patient have to come to us. And we'll do it with the basic structure that we've already had in place, just adding new things to it. And the doctors around me are still doing a lot of that. They haven't stopped. And they're going to do even further. And I keep seeing Rob walk in and we keep telling him what we need and he keeps uh, making things even better in our place time after time after time. But as we move along, we also have a very exciting uh, transition in that we can see every piece of data that was ever collected on any patient. Uh -huh. Every patient, Vinci, is there. And in a very short period of time, I can ask a question, and I get all of the blood pressures that were ever taken on four million patients with blood pressure elevation. And we can see that on the VA, we were 50% control in the year 2000, and now we're 80% control in many hospitals. And we can see why we got there, and what medicines we did to get there, and are there disparities, racial differences. <clears throat> And we just go for a <coughs> minute of water. water. <coughs> and we can see, uh, let's see uh, racial differences. <coughs> and we can see why those differences are there. One thing that's been particularly good about the VA family, which you all are part of, many ways is that we keep developing young people. In my hospital, all of my sons have been volunteers and have been there 
and done things in the hospital, one of them entering all of the pharmacy data. In the past, you didn't have the drugs in the package when it came out. You had to enter it locally. My kid did that. He's now developing software and is vice president of a company for development right at the moment. And my granddaughter just spent a summer at my hospital. And she just got very excited about caring for patients. And Carolyn just said she would like to do the same thing. <laughs> and you will be most welcome and your dad would be most proud of you because you'd come to a hospital where a lot of his ideas were put in place and are generated and we would welcome you very, very highly. Thank you very much.